Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking a valuable time attending this webinar, Processing Cooperations in Class. A couple of housekeeping items. A copy of the PowerPoint slide will be made available during the webinar handouts. We will taking any questions during the webinar via the chat window. However, we'll be sharing the answers to the question in a few days' time. We'll send you our a summary of every question and all our answers for this session. We also publish a recording of this webinar on, on class education website. Finally, at the conclusion of this webinar, we would love if you could take a moment to complete a short survey on your experience today. For those who do not know me, my name is Kevin Zhang. I'm the Compliance and Technical Service Manager class. I have over 20 years of industry experience, 11 years with class. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Self-Managed Superfund Specialist Advisor, Registered Tax Agent. I have Bachelor of Commerce and Law graduated from Sydney University. Um, for anyone who has attended my webinar previously, my session tends to be quite technical and very hands-on. It is, it is really aimed at experienced class users, self and superfund accountants and administrators who have to do the administration processing in class from beginning to finish. A quick disclaimer, the information provided today is general in nature and should not be relied upon as an advice. Some of the features and functionality may change and improve over time as we have taken into account of client feedback and suggestions. While we're waiting, for more attendees to arrive. Here is the first poll question on processing cooperation in class. Let me just launch the poll question. Okay, the first question is, how often do you process corporations in class? A, as they appear in the corporation console. B, daily. C, weekly, monthly or quarterly. D, the last option is annually when you actually work on the fund. I will give you a few seconds to complete the questions. Thank you for your answers. Okay, let's move on to our today's agenda. Okay, today we're gonna to go through an overview of cooperation um, processing class. This is through a series of frequently asked questions. Then uh, most of my presentation will be dedicated on the actual demonstration of of the processing of cooperation class, both at the fund scope as well as the business scope. We will go through on a real example of share, share buybacks. How do they actually create in class and how you actually process them? Then uh, rights issues. Um, we're going to do some both processing in relation to uh, takeover merge type of uh, type of transactions, as well as pro processing for spin-off and demergers. And we'll touch base the difference between the portfolio versus tax effect. And then we will drill down some of the um, manual corporations uh, processing where um, for one reason or another those corporations are not supported, are not supporting class or those investments are not supported. Um, the Excel transaction loader can be a useful tool to process a lot of transactions, including um, corporations. We'll see examples of using that to process, particularly for unlisted investments. And lastly, but not least, is the uh, page I put together for uh, some very useful uh, resources. Okay, um, overview of corporations. Um, let's first define what, what is a corporation. So a corporation is defined as an, an event initiated by a publicly listed company that affects its securities, whether the security being a debt security or equity securities like shares uh, issued by a company. So 
the, the event normally will have impact on the cost base of, of the uh, instruments or securities, uh, the market value, and, 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 and the yield, such as dividend uh, or distributions. Now, how does class source its corporations? So, um, most of the corporations are sourced directly from ASX. Uh, there's a product called Reference Point Data. Um, there are roughly about 130,000 corporations that's available through Reference Point. Majority are actually to do with dividend distribution information. So are there any corporations available for managed funds? So apart from the normal distribution income that we get through um, uh, RS uh, fund data uh, product, there are, there are generally no corporations available for managed funds. So what about foreign listed shares or securities? Simple corporations such as capital return, capital core, stock splits or consolidation will be supported through our data provider. Can you give some examples of the corporation that's not supporting class? Um, IPO or initial public offerings, uh, even though they're not supported, they can easily be processed as a purchase of shares. Conversion of shares, this is where you're converting um, a debt security to a equity securities. Uh, most of clients can use a takeover merger type of corporation to replicate uh, this type of conversions. Redemption and re reinvestment of hyper securities. So again, it's quite popular where um, some of the redemption happen with the old hyper securities and the proceeds used to reinvest to a new hyper securities. So to replicate that, you need to sell the old securities usually for $100 a unit and then use the proceeds to purchase a new uh, hyper securities for, for another hundred dollars of unit, they match those two. An exercise or lapsing of company options. Company options tend to have a very long expiry period. Um, and users usually need to uh, choose a point of time where it's optimal to, to exercise uh, the options. Unfortunately, class currently do not um, automate the lapsing of those kind of options. Temporary code change. This is, for example, uh, where they go through a, a share purchase plan, uh, say for BHP, um, they issued a temporary code like BHP ZZ, which is a broker firm offer. So class does not automate, well, create the code change corporation where you change from the main BHP to BHP ZZ and change back to BHP ZZ to BHP. The listed um, type of corporation, it's information only, they cannot be processed in class. Now, Another question we sometimes get is why some of the corporations only available at fund scope and not business scope? That's because some of the corporations are optional only and the choice needs to be made in order to process those corporations. And, and they are only appear in the fund level. So the most common example will be share buybacks and share purchase plan. Now, what are the corporations that's actually supporting class? Um, this table, I put um, some nice summary of type of corporation currently supported. Um, and it's breakdown to do based on the quality of the other feeds we, we are getting. Um, so the first four, capital core or capital return, code change or the description of the security change, split and consolidation and share purchase plan. Generally, these type of corporations are sourced directly from SX reference point with all the necessary information complete and they are ready to be actioned. Uh, every, on um, uh, very rare situations, sometimes we do need to insert a uh, capital return um, type of corporations. The next um, type of corporations to do with income um, generations. So this is income announcements where it's missing or income announcements where that has, they have incomplete data. So as most people, been using class for a long period of time, they are familiar with, they are familiar with how income is generated in class. Um, and they are based on the data sourced directly from SX reference point. And most of the information will be complete and allow income to be generated automatically without any problems. Every now and then, some of the um, information need to be updated to, to have more information. So if update is required, it's usually to do with type of income, for example, changing a dividend to a distribution or changing your interest income to a dividend because they've got franking credits attached. Sometimes we need to change the amount, the date and the reinvestment price. 
a very rare way we need to raise a development ticket to insert a brand new uh, income announcement in our community database. Then you have share buybacks, spin-off the merger, and rights exercise labs. So those type of, the initial cooperation or um, the initial information will be made available through SX reference point, but often the information is incomplete. What I mean by that is using um, buyback as an example, the breakdown of the capital and the dividend components are not present, and in usually the CGT day or the implementation implementation day is not not available. So our team, tech, our our cooperation team will go through um, do a thorough research of of the rulings and the details from from the company website or share registry to to understand what the buyback details are. Spin-off demerger is another uh, example where the demerger percentage is generally not available. Uh, if it's it's a spin-off, not a demerger, um, the in-species capital return uh, or distribution uh, amount is not available, and often the implementation date is also missing. Rights, um, we'll go through an example later. So it's to do with the exercise price of the rights, the the retail payment received if the, if the uh, rights elapsed um, and the implement, implementation of CGD date are some of the key information often is missing. Again, um, we have to go research and, and update those information. Finally, these two types of cooperation generally will not be available through SX at all. Those are uh, delisting information and, and takeover merger. The list of cooperation is, as, as I explained previously, it's information only. Um, the reason a company got delisted uh, usually need to be thoroughly researched by the class cooperation team uh, using delisted.com, and we do it on usually on a monthly basis. Once we find out if the delisted uh, reason is through some sort of scheme of arrangements, then we'll raise a placehold ticket. Um, to, to indicate there are further research analysis need to be done to find out the details of that skin of arrangement um, and usually it's a takeover merger. Um, now, the analysis, uh, it's, it's um, required to check in on the class rulings, um, the, the SX announcement details, uh, the corporate website of those those companies, the share registry documents, if any, um, and then we need to review and, and, and implement that. Um, and, and really depends on type of take of merger, whether it's cash only, uh, cash uh, script only, or cash plus script. And some the more complex one will involve all three. Now, normally, class can implement two two of the, the three options, um, and we will always choose a default one. So what I mean by that is this is the, the most popular option uh, where if the investors has not made a, a decision on uh, which preference they would like to take on the three different type of offers, uh, and then class will always default to, to the uh, use the default one. And for, for the ones that we don't support, we will always write additional knowledge base article or user guide pages to explain how you process the alternative ones. Now, as um, I, I mentioned, number is 130,000 corporations. So vast majority, which about 98% of corporation class will be in the system without any human interventions. Only about 2% of them need to be reviewed and approved by class. Out of that 2%, probably around 5% of them, so usually about two to 300, um, we actually need to update and, and insert that in, in, in the class database. Now, what should I do if there are missing corporations? Generally, takeover mergers, corporations will not be made available through SS. Uh, you can email support team to request this corporation or any other type of corporation uh, to be inserted. And we no normally need to do, um, you know, some of the corporation because we can't support it, or if it's the shares are forum, uh, list the shares, we generally do not support those type of corporations. But we will still give you an, an instruction or workaround to to how to process them um, uh, in class. What should I do if the corporation have 
um, are missing key informations, again, you should alert the support team. Um, we will be able to um, update the missing information for you. We, we regularly review these and update them as required. Can I process cooperation in bulk across all my class portfolio and funds? The short answer is yes, absolutely. Um, but they are only applicable to the compulsory type of corporations. Uh, usually involves a couple of clicks and it will do the trick. We'll sh show you um, later in the pre presentation how bulk processing work uh, in class. How soon class can make the cooperation available? Provided information is, uh, is, is complete and it's available for us, generally it takes up two to three, two to three weeks for us to, to make that cooperation available. How does class handle a cooperation from, from hell? Um, so what I mean by that is those are the extremely complex ones. Um, class will build sophisticated cooperation templates and tools to automate complex cooperations for wireless health securities, including very detailed instructions, worked examples, as well as many workarounds should clients do, you know, do not want to use class purpose-built cooperation template. So the example will be Westfield. Um, does class support cooperations um, via automatic wrap platform fees? The short answer is no. The longer answer is most of the wrap platform uh, will tend to only handle the portfolio effect. They don't necessarily care uh, about the actual task consequences. Uh, like our, most of our clients, class cares most about the actual tax consequences to ensure the correct CGT implications are reflected and ultimately reported to the ATL through the lodgement of the tax returns. So um, for that reason, we generally do not um, um, trust those type of corporations processed by, by the right platform um, providers and we tend to use the class one. When does class finalize corporations? So, um, corporations finalization usually occurs shortly followed by one of following being issued. So, number one will be the class ruling. Um, and if the class ruling is not applicable, then any share registry documents or SX announcements made by the company uh, publicly, then those information we will use. Um, uh, to, to do our analysis. So in addition to, uh, you know, tailor-made complex corporations, um, we also provide comprehensive user guide pages, detailed work examples, reference to class rulings, corporation uh, corporate and shared registry documents, and we'll provide manual instructions, for example, in, in like takeover situation, if the non-default -take, non takeover option are also, uh, are also available, we'll explain how you do that in class. Um, how, how does class notify you about the new corporations? Well, um, mostly uh, the corporation council will, did, um, will be updated on a daily basis. Um, monthly release notes, if you um, I noticed recently that we will have a dedicated section to do with corporations and obviously uh, reference back to the user guide and knowledge base. Now, next part of my presentation will focus on a demo of corporation in class. So it is a good opportunity to launch my next poll questions. From empirical studies, we know processing cooperation bulk through the Cooperation Council is one of um, underutilized features in class. So the poll question is actually asking you why, uh, and provide reasons why you do not process corporations in bulk. So let me just launch the poll. Okay, the options are A, you're, you, you are not aware of um, the bulk processing functionality. B, uh, you can't tell whether the holding balance is up to date and that's why you don't want to process any um, cooperation in bulk. C, uh, you're afraid processing any corporations may cause modified events due to interim period updates have run. D, uh, you only do fund level processing. E, it's not applicable and um, you actually do use class corporations processing in bulk. 
I'll give you a few seconds to complete the questions. All right. Thank you kindly for your for your replies. The final poll results will be shared together with the Q&A sheets. Okay. Um, let me just go to the next slides. Okay. Now, the next few slides, uh, hopefully you have a copy of the, hand, um, the handouts next to you. Um, those other details we'll be using, uh, we'll go through a share buyback example, a rights issue. Um, then we'll go the business level and process some cooperation through the Cooperation Council in relation to a takeover merger, a spin off the merger. And then we'll touch base the difference between portfolio versus tax effect. Okay. Let me go back in class. So here is a fund that I've been set up called Ryan's Toys Review Super Fund. It's a very simple fund, uh, consists of 400,000 cash and 1.2 million share portfolios. And all those share investments I chose to deliberately so you can, uh, to, as an example, to process corporations in class. And the first one we'll go through is um, Woolworths Share Buyback. Um, now to process Corporation at fund level, it is done through investments, browse corporations. Now, when the corporation initially manifests itself in class, and they will be basically create uh, effectively a shell, and the actual details will be will be to be seen. But once we conduct our research analysis of what these corporations involve, then you actually can process that. Now, in this example, I have 10,000 share, um, shares, and it's um, it's taking um, it's taking part in the share buybacks. Now, generally, we recommend you to process the corporation from from the earliest to the latest. However, um, this corporation they are not related to each other, then therefore you can process that in in in, in different orders. Okay, uh, let's just action this now. With most of the buybacks, um, share buybacks, off-market share buybacks, they can be very popular and therefore uh, the, the participating quantity often will be scaled back to not, not the full amount that you want to, um, you want, we want to be, be taking to share, buy, share buybacks. So in this example, the, the scale back is uh, 84.68, let's just put Eight four six eight units, and that's the amount of units bought got bought back through these corporations. And then, then when you tap, the system will automatically calculate the capital components, the franked amount, the franking credits, and the tax taxable market value excess amount. So this is the, the actual additional capital amount, and the proceed that you use to calculate the capital gain or loss. Well, clearly this example of your capital loss is sixty three thousand five hundred ten dollars. Now, I'll quickly show you the example where um, for us actually report that, uh, well, we actually showed the rules by back in the user guide. So uh, as you can see, it's it's quite comprehensive. It gives you detailed breakdown of the, the key uh, terms of that buyback. Um, this is your scale back. Um, so the capital amount is $4.79, $2.71 is the additional capital amount. Frank Dividend amount is twenty four fifteen. The shell the the sell proceeds basically is four point seven nine plus two point seven one at seven dollar fifty, and that's the amount we actually use to work out your to, as the sell proceed uh, to work out your capital gain loss. And this is the work example. And once you're happy with the information, uh, then let's go back. You can submit that. Now. Uh, that's an example how, how you process share buybacks um, in class. Um, Qantas is, share buybacks is currently uh, under uh, under research. We are just waiting for the class ruling to be made available. Hopefully, uh, will be will be um, uh, on, on the 11th or 12th of December, and then once the ruling is available, we will publish that corporations. The next one is rights issue. So. Rights issue generally involve two steps. The first step is actually issue of the rights. Um, now, this this is to do with transurban uh, TCL. 
and let's just process that. So I've got 20,000 dollars, every 57 units of the CCL um, transurban group, I will get 10 units of the rights. So, and it translates to uh, 3,509 units. Um, once I'm happy with this, now this rights, uh, as you can see, the description is accelerated um, uh, pa patrio, which stands for Parada Accelerator Institution with um, tradable retail entitlement offer uh, at $10 um, and, and 80 cents. So once you're happy, so generally the initial rights you will receive is for zero consideration um, and just update that. Now, renounceables. Renounceable means that the actual underlying securities can be can be traded on the ASX. Um, to to prove my point, um, so this was the security uh, code. So it's the TCLRB, uh, TCLRB, and if you look at the price for this security code, you know that there's a, a price history roughly about a week for the security around 5th of December to 11th of December, roughly about uh, just over a week. You know, the share price or the price was for those rights was the highest was 90.5 cents. Um, and, 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 and there are different prices on different dates. And, and 90.5 cents is actually four and a half times than the retail premium you received, um, which was at uh, 20 cents. So as investors, they probably want to sell on the market rather than uh, let it lapse and get receive retail premium. Okay, to process the next part, uh, let's click action. Now, as you can see, um, with the rights, there are effectively, so either you can sell on the market, and if you don't sell on the market, you can either exercise them to basically get the underlying shares at $10.08 per share, or you let it lapse, then and you will get a retail premium. Now, um, the ATL ruling has updated about the retail premium. It used to have the view as the retail premium should be treated as revenue, revenue income, but um, these days um, it, it seems to change to, to, to be capital. So in this case, we default to capital, but should you wish to be revenue, you can answer no to that question, then the income will be, um, if you receive any, will be treated as uh, normal income rather than capital. Okay, let's change back to capital. In this example, let's say um, 509 units actually um, exercised to get the shares at $10.80, and this is my um, premium I pay to get the shares in TCL, and the remaining 3,000 actually let it lapse. So I got 28, 20 cents per share, $600. Once you're happy, you can just submit that. So um, it give you a warning to oh, RMS to say you need to update parceling. So what does update parceling do? Update parceling actually will do parcel match for you effectively without you running a peer update. Let's just update that. And once you're happy, just click submit. Now we'll show a couple of examples how processing cooperation at fund level, and let's move to, to the business level. So I'll keep this window open um, because I will process the, the cooperation at business level and then come back here to see uh, how does that actually affect in, in this particular fund. Okay. Uh, to, to do business co uh, level cooperation, you got investment, cooperation console. The first example we're going to go through is um, a takeover. Um, takeover, so oh, sorry, takeover merger of Fairfax by uh, Nine Entertainment and Co, which is Channel Nine, and it happened on, a, on 2018 December 7th of December. So uh, it, it's it's gone through a skin of arrangement whereby there's cash of 2.5 cents offer plus a script component. Basically, for every Fairfax shares, you receive 0.3627 NEC shares. On the implementation date, the share price of uh, 9 or NEC is 1.67 per unit. So that's roughly translated to about 60 cents 
60.75 cents. Um, so you need to use that and to gouge uh, whether the, the, the underlying security is Fairfax, whether that's in the money um, or, or or not. And that will decide whether you get the, the script for script rollover relief or not. In class, the way we kind of replicate the, uh, the, the script component is through um, a, a demerger. Um, so it, basically, it, you have to assess whether um, you know the script plus the cash uh, was higher than or lower than the cost base. Uh, if if it's um, higher than the cost base, then obviously you can get the uh, the merger a script for script raw relief. But if it's lower, it's not. So FXJ. Now for this exercise, I assume all I've got 23 funds holding of funds of portfolio holding this security. I assume all of them actually can get the script for script raw relief. So therefore, I can post it this in bulk. Um, but obviously, if you're not sure, you should post it at uh, fund level. So you can click on it. So normally, you always do if it's cash plus script, you always do the script component first. Um, you can click so tick all and click process. Now, obviously, you've got this the merger um, relief questions or a replica of script for script role relief, whether it's applicable or not. And in this case, we'll assume yes. Continue. And then the system will be smart enough to process process everything in bulk. Um, then F5 can refresh that. Um, or you can just click the refresh button at the top. So you can see uh, it's quite quick and it processed effectively 25 corporations, uh, 23 corporations for Fairfax for me in one one click. Now, how easy for me is actually to reverse this? So this is the part I also want to show you. If I click, click undo, then effectively it will cancel all the corporations I just processed and put the position back to the original. Let me just refresh again. So some people have concerns. Um, we do capture the error message if, for some reason, there's the, the parcel problems or um, you know the financial is closed. You you will get um, you, you will get those warnings or those messages in this column. Now let's click and process again. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back to corporation um, and let's process the cash component. So uh, the script component, sorry, I, didn't, I forgot to mention one thing. So, uh, okay, let's post this cash first and I'll go to the user guide to explain the work, um, the steps. Again, tick everything, 23 funds, click process. There you go. All 23 funds are processed. Now, um, again, with um, you know any security that's widely held and it's complex corporations, we will put our user guide page. So this is the one to do with um, the Fairfax. Um, the way we uh, mimic the script component is, as I explained, is through a, a spin-off demerger event. Uh, this is the details. Now, how we calculate that? So this is calculated. Um, using, uh, let me just see you the, so we, we come up with a percentage of 96.0475%. Uh, now, how do we calculate this? This is how we portion it. So the, the market value is 1.67, the script component, um, divided by the total consideration, it consists roughly about 96.05%, and that's the percentage we use for the demerger percentage. If you get the the um, script for script of relief. And whatever left over, uh, you will be at disposal of the cash received at 2.5 cents, and um, uh, whatever you receive, you will calculate the capital gain. Let's go to the fund, have a look, the, just refresh this page. And you can see uh, the, the Fairfax um, merger with Channel 9 is, is processed. 
at its processing bulk. So the cash component, I've got 30,000 units at um, two and a half cents per share, so I should receive um, $750, and that's the amount that you use to work out the capital gain loss. The cash component, you will never get a, a script, you will never get situation relief. Okay, the next example we're going to go through um, is a demerger example. Um, and the one most popular demerger happening in the last financial year is the demerger of um, Coles from West Farmer shares. Uh, let's go there. Okay. And let's put in the code WES. Now I have 196 funds that I need to propose for this demerger. Uh, I can click on it. You can view announcement details, but I will click on it. Now, um, if we click this hyperlink, it will give you a bit more details about how we construct these corporations. So um, this is the entitlement day, adjustment day. Adjustment day is effectively the, the implementation day. It's one for one um, ratios. Uh, fraction rounding is actually the way we decide how uh, the rounding works, but obviously you've got one on one, there's no rounding issues. Um, it, it, this this corporation is definitely eligible for the merger relief and uh, the demerger percentage is 28.91%, okay? So this is the details and normally uh, this is a reference to the ATL rulings, but the class team, the corporation team actually do the analysis to complete that information. Okay, let's process that in bulk, select process. Now this time I'm processing um, 196 funds in one go. Um, always, so it would take a bit longer than the one previously, which only had a 23 funds, but, but again, it's quite quick. Um, and um, now, if you do get error messages, then those particular funds will not be processed and um, they will be read, action required, um, and they will give you a, a proper error message. Um, let me just refresh that. So it's still processing. Okay, here's an example of an error message. Uh, if you hover over, it will tell you a bit more. Uh, so it's still refreshing. So basically this particular fund, it's a test fund. It says there are no acquisition details for the source investment and therefore could not process that corporation. So for those funds, obviously you need to go, and has another example there. You need to go to each fund, have a look what's going on and uh, see if you can fix the error at the fund level, then you can reprocess that. And obviously, if any corporations already process at fund level, then the system's might enough to, to ignore that corporation and you will just uh, process the other ones that's, that has yet been processed. Okay, and now it comes to, again, with, with um, Coles, we, we provide very comprehensive user guide, how the corporation works, um, here's the ruling reference, the merger percentage, worked examples. If you don't want to elect the merger relief, these are the steps you need to process. What happens if you participate in the cell facility? And has reference to, to the additional user guide. Uh, a more complex corporation like Westfield, the user guide page is even more detailed. So this is a flow chart um, diagram explaining what involved in this Westfield um, uh, restructure. Um, we have, uh, you know, steps detailed steps, further readings, we'll have work examples where you can go through uh, uh, different situations where you have choose no role relief, with role relief, and you have pre-2010 uh, or 2014 parcels and the ones you actually have transitional stage to relief. Now, um, let's go back to the slides and um, the reason is this part I want to show you
Okay, portfolio versus tax effect. Now, um, the reason we introduced this um, is mainly to acknowledge that uh, a lot of time for us to finalize the tax effect, it does take a bit of time. The reason being uh, ATO ruling uh, um, uh, finalized, it usually takes months before you become available. Um, but for uh, um, people that are processing um, to portfolio administration on a daily basis, um, they need the balance to be up to date. And that's why we introduced the concept of portfolio effect. So what it does is it actually lets you to process the portfolio effect of cooperation, i.e. update the holding balance, and then you can process the tax effect later when the ruling become available. Now, when you process the tax effect, then what it does is it will cancel or delete everything that you process in the portfolio effect first, then reprocess the whole cooperation uh, with combined effect of portfolio and tax. Um, unfortunately, this is only available for spin-off the merger and rights issue type of cooperations that you can split the, the portfolio and tax effect. Menu cooperations, and there are many reasons that you need to do menu cooperations in class. The, the obvious ones are the ones uh, that are not supported by class or it's unleased investments or it's foreign investments. Um, we're going to go through an example how you process uh, a menu cooperation in class. This is a real example of um, seven group um, preference shares. Um, they got converted to uh, seven group equity shares. Um, the ruling was actually issued initially back in 2010 when the initial product was uh, was launched. Um, but but Basically, paragraph 37 says conversion will not give rise to a CGT event, um, and basically you will retain the original CGT date and the cost base of the preference shares. And the ratio is uh, every uh, preference shares you will get one plus 3.60645 shares in the seven group holdings, but now it's SVW, which is the new code. Um, and we'll show that how you actually process this in class. And the next part, we'll, we're also going to show you um, processing cooperation use Excel transaction loader, particularly for unlisted investments, like unlisted uh, shares shares or unlisted units, unit, unit trusts, and how you potentially use class. This this wonderful tool to, to process that in bulk. Okay, let's go back to the fun. Um, Here's an example of the menu corporations that you need to process. This is done not through investment, but through transactions, investment, corporation. So uh, I want to use takeover merger to kind of replicate this conversion exercise. And the source investment will be my, um, my SVWPA shares. Um, the target investment will be SVW, and if it's not available, you can always create create a new investment account. But in this case, I already created SVW, and the transaction date was 27th of September, 2018. Okay, um, and it's not a takeover and merger, but you can you can change the uh, narrations or description to conversion. And the quantity is 450 units times by 4.60645. You get 2072.9, but uh, it's always rounded down um, based on the scheme of arrangement documents. So we we're going to, based on the ruling, so we will change that to 2072. Uh, update parceling. Remember, it does the parcel match for you without running period update with roll of relief. And basically, it will retain the original purchase date of 11th of August 2016 as well as the original cost base, which is $450,000 uh, as the cost base for the new 2072 shares in se uh, seven group. Once you're happy with that, submit that. Okay. Um, obviously, there are other cooperation you can process through the manual cooperation. 
and this include, uh, let me quickly show you the list, um, buyback, capital call, capital return, co-change, rice, uh, uh, rice excise labs, spin-off the merger, uh, split consolidation, takeover merger. Now, the last part is the using process cooperation use Excel transaction loader. Now, what I want to show you first is this example of, um, um, you know, advisor suggest uh, many of their, their, their clients to invest in particular property trusts. In my example, I have four different funds or portfolios investing in this property trust, unlisted property trust, being 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, or 40,000 units. And they were initially issued a $1 per, per, per unit, and that, that was the cost base. But obviously, if you have, you know, 500 funds, uh, you know, uh, have uh, 100 funds investing in this, uh, you can use, the concept is the same. I'm just using four as an example. Okay, here's the loader, which I've just downloaded. Um, now, being a property trust, sometimes they need to raise uh, additional uh, capital, uh, fund rate, uh, additional capital to, to finance some of the property development projects. So uh, let's let's do a capital call. So capital call is done through the portfolio um, portfolio tab, and you click capital return capital call. You put the uh, investment code. So obviously this one will be enlisted trusts. It's a capital call. I'm doing on 31st of December 2018. Let's call it 50 cents per unit, and the effective day or the payment day, make it two weeks later. So 14th of January 2019. Click OK. Okay, I need to put my login name password. I'm just bring up. Okay, so sometimes um, uh, it also uh, it, it so the Excel actually has the multi factor multi-factor authentication enabled so you may ask you for the um, um, for the for the uh, the, the code on the mobile okay um, so I've got 40,000 units 20,000 um, will be the capital call for 50 cents sorry $20,000 okay now imagine this uh, unlist property trust was doing quite well and um, and um, the, the fund manager want to do some sort of distribution for this unlisted, and you can actually do that in class as well. Here's how. So let's say they actually made a uh, five cents distribution at the end of the year. You type in the security code, unlist the trusts. Uh, the type will be distribution cash. Let's make X date, it's 28th of June, 2019. We're paying five cents per unit, um, because it's distribution, the ranking percentage is not applicable. Uh, let's make it uh, 14th of July as the payment day. Click OK. There you are. It generated four um, distribution cash event for the four trusts. So I've got 40,000 in this um, this cooperation webin CA dash webinar fund times by five cents. So and that's why I got two thousand two thousand dollars. And guess what? You can the next step you can actually do tax statements for this. Now, um, property trust the income normally involved will be um, you know rental income, and I may have some tax deferred income. Let's say four cents is actually uh, rental income, and one cents is tax deferred, uh, which together it's five cents. Now, how to process that? Let's just copy this. Put the next four rows. Now this time I changed the type from uh, distribution cash to tax statements. Copy that, and I'll paste, I'll paste that across. Okay, so this is the amount. Let's do the tax statements. So um, rental income usually will be considered as other income, other income here. Uh, let's do the formula. So let's uh, set a four cents, right? Zero point zero four. 
times by the number of units, which happened in my portfolio tab, uh, 40, uh, 10,000. Okay, here's my formula. Copy, paste, and paste. So for my 40,000 units at 4 cents, it's uh, 1,600. Then my tax deferred, let's go tax deferred column. Tax deferred is towards the end, it's here. Uh, let's copy the formula. So I said 1 cents, so 0 0.01 times by units. Oh, there you go. $100, and let's copy this formula, paste over here, and paste over here. There you go. Um, within less than a minute or two, I processed a whole year of uh, distribution cash and tax statements for this unlisted property trust. Finally, um, the, the fund manager is quite generous. Um, they want, and the property trust was doing well, if they want to do a, a, a split to award the original investors. Um, so every every unit they held originally, they want to split into, into uh, five units, let's say. So the, the cooperation type in this case you need to select split and consolidation. Uh, sorry, wrong one. You click generate cooperations. And security code you type is unlist, unlist trust. Event type is uh, split consolidation. Entitlement day, let's say the entitlement day happened to be 28th of June 2019, and the payment day is 1st July 2019. And that's when the new units are well issued or split. Click OK. And this is my, my new unit, uh, the old units, my new units is One in five, this is my new units. Copy, paste. Okay. Um, then you got an overview tab. I've just created, you know, in the income tab, I've created distributions and tax statements. The portfolio tab, I've created a capital call at the beginning of the year. And the corporation tab, I've created uh, for split and consolidation, or share splits effectively. And then guess what? You can actually load those files. So I'm going to load those files. Uh, while the system is processing loading, I will go to the, my um, presentation slide to cover the last, uh, last, last slide. Okay. Um, this slide actually spent most of my time on it, and uh, it's the useful resources. These are the tools and, and the sites that I use to do cooperation research. Um, majority are free um, information that you can easily get access to, and obviously there are a few information we pay subscription for. Um, now, the ones in bold are the ones I want to highlight. So the first one, Obviously, the ATO class ruling. So, if you click this hyperlink, it will give you uh, a, a library of all the class rulings being issued um, based on financial years, um, or calendar, uh, financial years. So, 2019 will be the one you'll be interested in most. Delist.com.au. So, we use this website extensively to research for the reasons why a company got delisted for ISX. And from that, if it's some sort of skin of arrangement, take of a merger, We'll create uh, a ticket that, that uh, uh, remind us to do further research on the detail of those corporations. Um, Net wealth corporation diary. So this is actually quite useful summaries of key corporations that that provided for each month. If you click this hyperlink, it will give you the December month. Mark index is another wonderful website. Um, so for some people being in the industry long enough, they probably remember. Um, a website provided by Fairfax um, called Trading Room. So it was one of very popular sites, got a lot of free information about you know, share price, ASX announcements, dividend histories, and, and the like. And this mark index almost have the equivalent information as well. So I highly recommend to bookmark that as well. 
a couple of the ones we pay subscription for so uh, Morningstar they they purchase Aspect Huntley uh, basically they are very good for again ASX announcements price histories and dividend uh, annual reports Connect4 is owned by um, uh, Thomson Reuters and um, it's great for tracking takeover merger and capital raising information. CG Reporter is owned by CCH. Uh, it's excellent for historical corporations and a cost-based uh, parcel history re reconstruct. Okay, let me see. So it's submitted. Uh, let me submit the next one. And I'll submit the corporation as well after that. Uh, quickly go to the fund. I will show you uh, if, if they are being uh, processed. Um, so this is the tax statements for the property trusts. Um, that's show as manual feed. Okay, I'll just load it uh, furthermore. Uh, refresh that. So this is the uh, the capital core that's got loaded uh, uh, as a corporations. Uh, and finally is the, is the split share split so another way you can see um, a business level go to transactions browse load of files it will tell you uh, each file that you commit submit and how you know how are they actually process in class whether they successful or not so I process the income portfolio successfully and I'm just waiting for the the corporation um, tab to come through and that should have the uh, okay, it's gone through. Let me just refresh that. Uh, so that this is split and consolidation, as you can see, your process of cooperation split. So I had a, a forty thousand uh, call. Spring to one in five, uh, every one you get five, so it's 200,000 units. There you go. Um, on that note, I'll conclude um, this webinar. Uh, we hope you have submitted queries during the sessions. We'll provide you all with a list of the questions and answers in a few days from now. As I mentioned earlier, there will be a very short survey at the conclusion of this webinar. We would greatly appreciate if you could take some time, provide any feedback regarding this presentation and the content. Thank you so much for your time today. And this most likely will be the last webinar class presented this year. As we enter into festive seasons, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a safe and sound holiday season. Have a merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We look forward to see you in 2020. Thank you.